Mr. Firth, it's correct that you uh, you have legal counsel with you this morning. That's correct. So this is the uh, the first time of your appearances where um, you have a lawyer present, but didn't in in previous uh, appearances. Uh, have you ever lied to a parliamentary committee before? I think in previous testimony, you you see the answer with that one about the chalet and the cottage. So is that a yes? I advise you to go and watch my previous testimony. Well, I, I was there and I, I asked the question and of course um, you uh, you did lie about uh, about Mr. McDonald's um, secondary residence uh, quite famously on uh, it not being a cottage but in fact it being a chalet. Um, uh, further, you lied about meeting government officials um, outside of government offices. And further, you lied about providing hospitality to uh, government officials. Um, there was a great deal of information that was requested of you that was uh, not furnished to the committee, uh, promising to tell the committee who in government contacted you about uh, ArriveCan. Um, that information hasn't been provided to us. You didn't disclose uh, meetings with government officials and you failed to provide documentation that the committee has asked you for. Last week, government officials announced that files concerning GC strategies, role and involvement in a RIVE scam have been sent uh, to the RCMP. Uh, did the government make you aware of that? Yes or no, please. No, they have not. Has the RCMP contacted you about uh, a RIVE scam? No, they have not. So the RCMP has uh, further, they have not interviewed you. That is correct. Have you been contacted by the RCMP about any work relating to any companies or ventures that you're involved in and their work with the government of Canada or government officials? No, I have not. Do you know if your partner, Darren Anthony, has been uh, contacted by, by the RCMP uh, to the same effect? I do know, and he has not. If requested by the RCMP, will GC Strategies, files, computers, emails, cell phones, and uh, any area where uh, data is stored um, or devices that have been used to communicate with the Government of Canada as part of their investigation into the ARRIVE scam, will you, um, will you voluntarily uh, submit that information to the RCMP? We will deal directly with the RCMP once they contact us. Okay. Sir, how much did you state in your previous appearance before this committee uh, were you paid to work on ArriveCan? For the ArriveCan application build, which is what we gave our numbers to the committee for last year, we said it was approximately $11 million was the application build. Uh, the Auditor General, um, though you've said that all of the reporting about your company since your last appearance has been false, there's been heavy media reporting about the work of Canada's Auditor General. Um, she detailed a different number. Um, is, the, uh, is the information that the Auditor General has submitted uh, incorrect? Yes, it is. We actually were asked by the Auditor General to give comment uh, prior to the report being published whether we could support the numbers that they were putting in there. And in actually, we, well, if you remember from my last previous testimony when I was ridiculed and being called disingenuous for not having the true cost of a ride can, um, we discussed the fact that there were three COVID-19 pandemic contracts. There was not one that was solely set aside for a ride can. So I can understand why it was hard for the Auditor General with her also indicating that some of the task authorizations for a ride can could have had resources doing no work since my testimony and how I got the numbers there, I painstakingly went through every single invoice, spoke to every consultant, and got an understanding of what their level of effort was for the ArriveCan application build. And my numbers were in line with what Mr. Utano testified last time. Okay. The, uh, that's information that you um, ought to have had at your last appearance, but um, I'll, I'll take the Auditor General's word that, uh, that the number was in excess of $19 million, which of course is not the number that you submitted to this uh, committee. 
Um, at your second appearance before this committee, you testified that you did not meet with government officials outside of government offices, and we now know that you did that on multiple occasions. Why did you lie to this committee? It was not a lie. I just was unaware. I hadn't checked all of my outlook, but I can tell the committee today that I have met with officials outside of work. Of course, we know that, sir, uh, and uh, we understand that you're telling us that now, having been caught in the lie. The question is, why did you believe it was necessary to attempt that, uh, that deception before this parliamentary committee? It wasn't a deception. I just wasn't informed of all the meetings that I had or had not have had. I wasn't have access to my outlook. What are the names of all of the government officials that you have met with outside of government offices? I'm more than happy to provide that information in writing, but I'm not prepared to do that right now televised. Are, are you able to name a single... Well, sir, it's not, it's not your discretion which answers that you're able to provide in writing. I'm asking you a question. Are you refusing to answer the question? No, I gave you my answer. I'm not refusing to answer the question. I will give you the names. I'm so, no so, 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 so what are the names, sir? What, okay. what are the names, sir? That is, yeah, I have to interrupt. That is, that is our time. Perhaps we can get back to it in the next round. Now, uh, uh, Mrs. Block for five, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. And I'm going to circle back to some of the questions that my colleague was asking in regards to who from the government would have contacted you for, for these contracts. And I know you provided us with a name for a contract. And you stated that it was Angela Durgan from PSPC who had signed off on an email. I think that was in regards to the first contract that you had received. But um, in fact, you received four contracts for Arrive Can, three which were non-competitive and one that was supposed to be competitive. So I'm going to ask if you could provide us with the names of those contacts on those contracts. Absolutely. And, and again, thank you for the question, but they were never ArriveCan contracts. They were all pandemic response contracts, and ArriveCan was not solely used on just one contract alone. It was used across two of them. So they're pandemic response ones as opposed to four ArriveCan contracts. Okay. Well, I, I do understand that the national security um, exemption was put in place during the pandemic. And so can you provide us with the names of the contacts from the government uh, when you were awarded the four contracts. So Angela Durgan was three of them. And I don't have the lady's first the full name for the fourth one, but I'm more than happy to share that with you after this. I would appreciate that because this information was requested from you last October and you... Um, yeah agreed promise to undertake to provide those names for us and you didn't so i'm so, i'm a little sorry, bit leery provide, about no, that no i did provide i did provide those names as part of our evidence package i gave all three emails that were the contract awards um and all three of them showed angela durgan the, the reason why the fourth one wasn't provided because that was only asked for the covid contracts not for us uh, not for the the fourth one Okay, so we're, but, we're but going to make it, was provided. So we're going to make a distinction in regards to your contracts as to whether it was the pandemic, COVID, or arrive can. I got that. So you will national provide national security exemption. Yes, national security exemption. Absolutely. So you have agreed to provide us with the name of the other individual that you were in contract in contact with. Yes, I will. Thank you very much. The Auditor General, and, and I understand that uh, you've testified here today that uh, in her report she didn't provide accurate information, but she found that GC Strategies was involved in the development of a contract from the Government of Canada to your firm valued at $25 million that you received in May of 2022. Who did you communicate with from the Government of Canada while you were helping to um, create that criteria? Um, so, so first of all, like, you know, the committee has subpoenaed me here to speak on behalf of things that I can talk about. Um, also, my understanding is these allegations have been moved to the RCMP. And in fear of interfering with those, uh, those the RCMP investigation, I don't think I can comment on that right now. 
to the Erickson Feeding Company? So uh, it's my understanding from testimony just a few minutes ago that you have been contacted by the RCMP. Um, you're not under investigation right now, but you know what the RCMP is investigating? I, I have the same information everybody else. I have the what I'm watching on testimony. I'm seeing what uh, committee members are putting on Twitter. Um, so I'm assuming all of the uh, ASBC's testimony said they the, all the findings from the Order General's report has been sent through there. So again, with that being a broad stroke and with actually not getting disclosure like we asked for uh, prior to being here, understanding what those documents and that information was, I just it's it's I cannot comment right now on on that information. You're not going to let us know who it was you were meeting with as you were constructing a contract that you knew you would end up getting. Yeah, that's your words, not mine. Um, I'm just saying right now, I, as a result of this being pushed to RCMP with all efforts of the committee behind it, unfortunately, I cannot comment on an ongoing RCMP investigation. Okay, well, um, I guess what I would ask is, is this um, commonplace? We'll get, we'll get away from the actual contract in question, but is this commonplace for IT firms, for consulting firms to sit at the table and help determine the criteria for a contract that they are going to actually be bidding on? I'm not sure. What, if I can comment on that, uh, I can't comment on what everybody, I don't do that personally. I can't comment on what every other of the 635 other firms do. Point of order, Chair. Um, yes, go ahead, sir. Um, the witness is refusing to answer questions under the auspices of uh, a hypothetical, according to him. And um, he is required to answer the questions put to him by this committee. Uh, unless I'm mistaken, and and if I am mistaken, I just ask for you to uh, uh, to to correct my understanding. But the witness is is required to provide this information, and his lawyer would be able to tell him that it wouldn't prejudice a police investigation. Yeah, that is, it's a fair point. We do require witnesses to answer questions. Um, actually, from looking at the item from swearing of witnesses, witnesses refuses. Okay. Refusal to answer questions or failure to reply truthfully may give rise to a charge of contempt in the House. Uh, we will get to the next um, intervention. Mr. Deltel, please go ahead for five minutes. Merci beaucoup, uh, Monsieur le Président. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairperson. Now, obviously, we want to get to the bottom of what is the worst uh, financial scandal of the history of the Government of Canada. This is a contract that was supposed to start at about $80,000, ended up in an orgy of spending of over $60 million, which is over 750 times more expensive than what was expected. This is not right. Canadians need to understand why there was this boondoggle that they're still paying for to date. We know that GC Strategies was threatened uh, by, uh, by, with arrest uh, regarding testifying here. Uh, uh, which attests the fact that uh, there was no confidence in the fact that you may have refused to testify before this committee, but I'm afraid you have an obligation to do so. Mr Chairperson, this is not the first time that Mr Firth is testifying. There were two previous testimonies. First, regarding the testimony, your previous testimony, did you lie, yes or no, in your previous evidence? Sorry, can you repeat the question, please? I was at some, some feedback on my on my microphone. Avez -vous menti? Did you lie in your two previous appearances before this committee? Yes or no? Um, for two, can I made a mistake with a with a uh, cottage and a chalet last time I was here. Okay. And again, it's not a it's not a lie. I mean, the actual irony the irony is that uh, it was referred to as a cabin. And puis l'hospitalité avec uh, le whisky sur And. What of the whiskey and the hospitality involved? Yeah, I mean, there's been previous testimony where there was whiskey tasting, and I think it was mentioned that uh, that was put out to government officials, and it was also put out to contractors, and those government officials have since said that they got permission from their superiors and paid their way. 
Prenons maintenant le, le contrat tel qu'il Now, the contract as it was awarded, is it, it's the contract that you executed. At what point did you realise that $80,000 was insufficient and that things were starting to cost a lot? At $1 million, $2 million, $3 million? At what point did you clue into the fact that uh, this was going to go through the roof and it was going to become exceedingly expensive? So again, thank you for the question. Like that, that's not my determination. My the first contract award was for two point three five million dollars. That was the one that was the the first COVID contract. Subsequently, there there were amendments that were made. You have to bear in mind. I think testimony mentioned that national security exemptions only were to last for three months. So there had to be a decision made by the government to either put a larger number and keep doing amendments versus keep going back and retendering and redo it, which isn't a fast process, we know that, to retender and restructure a contract every three months. My understanding was it did jump, the, the one contract we're uh, talking about, that went from 2.35 and it went to 13.9. But my understanding was every time there was an amendment, it was published on buy and sell, which has 635 other companies can challenge. And it was also put in front of the house and MPs voted in the house every single time there was an amendment so it wasn't it wasn't like i knew but everybody knew that the the, the prices were raising like de la... who monitored the quality of the work that you were doing overnight you can't just go from eighty thousand dollars to sixty million dollars without some someone sounding the alarm bells and saying something is awry who monitored the quality of your work we had have four or five government officials that was monitoring the quality of our work where, you know, we, we were not, there were other prices associated to just arrive can and the application bill that we're not privy to. So we were not part of the 19.1 or the 11 million to the 60. We were from the zero to the 11 or 19.1, depending on what you, which, which article you want to read. Now, when COVID struck, of course, there were going to be exceptions. Everyone understands that. But there's a distinction to be made between being very active and uh, inflating the bill to the tune of 700 times larger exponentially. That's what Canadians wanted to get the bottom of. When did you realise that this was a phenomenal cost overrun and yet it was lacking in quality? At what point, please? Um, first of all, we... We've submitted over 1,500 invoices monthly. So, again, I want to get the illusion of everybody's thinking right now. We were never given a check for $20 million on day one. We've sent 1,500 in monthly approved submitted invoices for the last three years to get to whatever amount you want to listen to, 19.1 or 11. Um, we were not responsible for alerting any alarm bells. We were performing. Uh, we hit 171 releases of the application on time. Every time public health agency changed the policy, We'd have to amend the the, uh, the the application, and that there in itself, the fact that we were hitting all of our targets, meant that we were doing a good job. But we also don't control what the budget is. That's that's out of our realm. Vous faisiez, ouais, vous that is, votre propos. I, I un... Sir, time. Sir Genwis, for five minutes, please. Go ahead, sir. Uh, thank you, Chair. Mr. Firth, this is a sad example of corruption and potential criminality, but it also exposes incredible waste. Uh, within uh, this government, especially in the area of procurement and contracts to well-connected consultants for, in many cases, no discernible work. So I want to try, in my round of questions, to follow the money that was spent. The Auditor General's report estimates $59.5 million spent on the app, and further, that your company received directly $19.1 million of that money, even though, by your own admission, all that you did was recruitment of other individuals and companies. That's an incredible sum for, quote-unquote, recruitment. Uh, but you told the committee that the Auditor General's information is not correct. Uh, you dispute the $19.1 million figure. You say it was only $11 million. Is that correct? The application bill, that's correct. Okay, so, so what happened to the missing $8.1 million? What do you think accounts for the discrepancy? Well, so you'll see in my, my evidence package, we've actually invoiced CBSA in three years, close to $22 million, approximately. I'm not, dis I'm not disputing the fact that $19 million was an invoice through my company monthly. I'm disputing that that $19.1 million is completely attributed towards the ArriveCan application build. 
Okay, so your testimony is that you've received $22 million from CBSA over the same period. You simply uh, are disputing the categorization of it as being uh, all related to ArriveCan. Uh, what, 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 what I would add to this in terms of, of frankly, the absurdity is that uh, the invoices that you've submitted to this committee, some of which are are very kind of vague and unclear in terms of what they actually refer to, but they add up to nine point six million. So you've shown this committee invoices for nine point six million. You've also said uh, you've got eleven million uh, that you you categorize as as, as related to arrive cam and twenty two million uh, in total. Uh, so how do you explain the discrepancy between what you've shown us invoices for and what you said uh, was uh, you actually received? First of all, the $22 million is not just solely ArriveCan. There was multiple projects we were working on during the pandemic. These were not ArriveCan contracts, right? There were three pandemic... Yeah, the Auditor General says contracts. they are, but but I, I was asking specifically about the difference between the $9.6 million and the $11 million. You said You said you got $11 million, but you didn't provide us with $11 million worth of invoices. We, we sent hundreds of pages of documents over. I can follow up and make sure that those ones would result to $11 million. Yeah. I've done this again. Like hundreds, times. Hundred, hundred, hundreds of pages doesn't absolve you of the need to provide accurate information, uh, sir. Uh, and just in terms of, of the difference between the 19.1 and, and the 11 million, um, you, you, you started off your, your testimony by saying that every, everybody's uh, lying and saying mean things about you. The media is wrong. The MPs are wrong. Um, but you're also now saying the Auditor General's wrong. Uh, what, what are we as a committee to make of the fact that you – uh, want us to believe that everybody is wrong in their figures except you, and yet the invoices you've sent to the committee don't add up to the figure you said was spent uh, on or was given to you in relation to ArriveCan. Yeah, I also said as well, it's uh, in my opening statement that it's this testimony and this committee that have also had death threats against myself and my wife. Which had photographs of my kids being sir, taken. Sir, I'm, 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 I'm looking for too. accurate information on the amount of taxpayers' money that went to to your company. Um, I, now we've uh, invoiced. Can I, we've invoiced fifteen hundred times, twenty two million dollars. Well, uh, the the invoices do not line up with the figures you've done. given, sir. Sir, I'd like to know uh, for for all um, the money that you earned on this project. Um, after expenses, what what was the total amount of money that you and your partner took home for, for from this project? I have the I haven't got the exact numbers after taxes, after expenses, through dividends, but I've told you it's two point approximately two point five million dollars each. Approximately each. No, no, in total. That's, okay, that's the so twenty percent. So you 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 and your partner became millionaires through this project, and you want us to believe that all of the rest of it, in addition to the two two point eight million, were expenses, even though all you did is recruit. I mean, how expensive is a LinkedIn uh, account these days? Well, $2.5 million over two years is 1.25, divided by two people. How many hours, how many hours did you spend working on, on, on sending the LinkedIn invitation, sir? That has no bearing on this project, does it? I, I, I think it does. How, how much, how much you earn for what work is the question we're asking, right? And, and, and the numbers don't line up. And, just, a, and just a quick question and a quick answer, please. Yeah. How, how, many, how many hours did you spend working on this project in exchange for the millions of dollars that you and your partner uh, got for, got for the, the act of recruiting? It would have been between 30 to 40 hours every month with the invoicing, with doing timesheets, with doing accounting, with doing paying paying our resources. And so, so what makes you so that lucky our, that you that got this time, Mr. opportunity? Uh, Genwis, thanks very much. Mrs. Block, please go ahead. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Mr. Firth, I'm going to circle back to my line of questioning regarding uh, GC Strategies' involvement in developing criterion on the fourth contract that you would have been awarded through the CBSA. Both the Auditor General and the Procurement Ombuds identified the overly restrictive criterion on that fourth contract, which obviously raised concerns for both of them. Of deeper concern to the Auditor General is that she went further and identified that GC strategies were at the table. And so 
look, you would have been meeting with public office holders in order to, to set this criteria. They are accountable to Parliament. And so I'm going to ask you the same question that I asked earlier. I'm trusting that you've had an opportunity to speak with your lawyer. Who did you communicate with from the Government of Canada? And I oh, need the names. Personal, thank, thank you. Thank, thank you for the question. So let me address the um, about the requirements being overly restrictive. I think I've heard in testimony and read in reports that uh, the ePortal did a CPSS search, and there were actually 40 qualified vendors that could bid on this RFP. And actually, I think 10 even showed interest. Um, so it seems a little subjective after the fact to call it restrictive uh, when there were already 40 qualified vendors who could actually respond to that. And secondly, I, um, I've had a chance to speak with my lawyer, and uh, I'm st sticking to what my line of is with regards to this is under investigation by the RCMP, and therefore I cannot interfere with that. Mr. Chair, I'm wondering if you could provide us with any clarity on that. Yeah. Thanks, Mrs. Block. Mr. Firth, I understand what you're saying, but it's it's a it's a very direct and simple uh, question, and we do have rules, and I'm going to refer back to it. Witnesses must answer all questions which the committee puts to them. You may object to a question asked by an individual committee member. However, the committee agrees that the question uh, to be put to the witness, a witness is obliged to reply. Um, actions a witness refuses questions may re be reported to the House. And I, I, I don't, I think I can speak for everyone. We don't want to get to that point, but I think it's a fair question. And I don't think it's one directly related to any potential investigation. I, I, if I read it right, it's the commentary that um, GC helped write the requirements that you in turn won the contract for. And I think that's what we're looking for it is, if I correct Mrs. Block, is, you know, who did you discuss oh, this with the, uh, the department with? Yeah, so, I, so again, I've, I've, the first three contracts, the names have already been provided back in October of 2022. And I promised the, um, the committee member that I'll get the fourth person to them after this meeting. Okay. So I want, just for greater clarity, um, I'm looking for the individuals or individual that you would have met with in developing the criteria, not who signed off on the contract in this particular case. I do want that name, but now I'm asking who did you sit at the table with to develop the criteria for this contract. And again, apologies, but uh, after speaking with my lawyer, my, my stand still stands the same with the RCMP investigation pending. I don't interfere with that. Well, Mr. Chair, I'm not sure where we go with that, but I'm sure we'll discuss that uh, in due time. I'm going to then turn some of my questions to um, a slide deck for a possible app in March 2020 that you were asked to create. It's my understanding uh, that this deck was presented to Mendon, who is a key government official that was involved in ArriveCan. And that particular app had a Distill Mobile logo. Um, if, uh, if that is correct, who asked you to, pro to provide the deck? I'm sorry, can you? Sorry, can you please repeat the question? Sure. You were asked to put together a slide deck for a possible app in March of 2020. Who asked you to provide that deck? I'm more than happy to get that to you in writing. I was not aware of this question coming up. So March 2020 at Distilled Deck. Yep, I can get that to you. Okay. Um, so you were contacted from the government and you were told you are receiving a contract for ArriveCan. Is there anyone at the CBSA that would have to declare a conflict of interest on contracts that you are bidding on? No, there's not. Okay, so you are not related to anyone at the CBSA? Correct, I'm not. Okay. Are you related to anyone working for a government department or any public office holder? All of my family is in the UK. Okay, thank you very much. Let's uh, turn now to Vaughn Brennan. He is an Ottawa-based consultant, and it is my understand him. You know, it is my understanding that you know him professionally. Is that correct? 
Correct. Do you know him in any other capacity? No, I do not. Okay, Mr. Brennan's wife worked at Procurement Canada. That's the department responsible for oh. government contracts. Were you aware of this? Not until now. Okay, just, I guess, another convenient coincidence. Who were your contacts with the government at the following departments and agencies? We have Canada Border Services Agency. It's my understanding there are 134 contracts there. Innovation, Science and Economic Development Canada, 24 contracts, and Employment and Social Development Canada. So who are your contacts with all of these departments? Um, I'd like to provide all of those details after this meeting, please. I would not like to speak about it publicly, just how this committee is going. So if you wouldn't mind, I would provide that information to you after this meeting. Um, we're out of time anyway, so perhaps we can get back to that in the next round. Great. Mr. Barrett, go ahead, please that uh, we have a round of uh, questions with you. Uh, it seems like there's a lot of cleanup afterwards. I have to go back to the question Ms. Block asked you. That was who were your contacts with the government at the following departments and agencies? Uh, CBSA, Innovation Science Economic Development Canada, Employment and Social Development Canada. Are you telling us you don't know the answers to that question or uh, is your answer that you're refusing to provide us uh, with the information that you, that you have? Oh, not at all. Actually, I think my answer was I will provide those to you in writing after this meeting. Do you know That's the answer? That's exactly what I said. My, my question is, do I you do know, know? Then provide I it, I do sir. know the answer. I will after this meeting with writing. You know, I, I think that you have a, a, a grave misunderstanding of how this process works, and your refusal to answer questions here um, is a contempt of Parliament. And so that is something that we can take up. I know it's great. Uh, you take great umbrage in the fact that um, that a subpoena had to be issued and that had you not appeared today, a warrant would have been issued and you would have been arrested and brought before this committee. So you're here very much um, not because you want to be forthcoming. You're here only under the threat of arrest. So that's what we're dealing with and trying to get answers from you. So you'll have to excuse me if um, I don't believe you, sir, that you're going to bring us the answers after uh, the, the cameras go off and uh, and the committee is adjourned. Because in your first uh, back and forth uh, that you and I had, um, you know, you, you admitted to having perjured yourself in a previous appearance at this committee. So I, I have to go back and talk about that again. You admitted to meeting officials in private residences and um, you exposed your own lie. And so I, I need to know what are the names of government officials that you have met with anywhere outside of government offices? Just the names. First of all, I want to address the first thing you said, where I, I don't want to be here because I want to be arrested. I don't want to be here because my family and myself and my kids have been threatened. And people feel like that's sir, the real reason sir, I don't the, want to be here. The, the question I, is very straightforward. It's for a list of names. Yeah, which I'm happy to give you, and I'm admitting I will give you those within 24 hours after the testimony. Don't I don't believe you. Did you ever meet with Philip Johnston in a private residence or any place other than a government office? I have met with Philip Johnston outside of work, yes. Where? At a pub. When? 2021. We're going to circle back to that. I, Have you ever met with Min Doan in a private residence or anywhere other than a government office? No, I have not. Same question. Cameron McDonald. I have met him outside of work. We, we heard the testimony three times. When and where, sir? I'm happy to provide that information in 24 hours. I don't have that in front of me. Same question. Antonio Utano. Yes, I have. When and where? Again, I will get you that information. Kelly Boulanger. I have never met with Kelly Boulanger outside of work. Mark Briard. Yes, I've met with Mark Briard outside of work. When and where? I'll get you that information. So this is interesting. And so, again, you'll have to excuse my, uh, um, my unwillingness to take at face value that you're going to provide us information after. Because I asked you these questions when you appeared before this committee before, and you said that you hadn't met with uh, officials, government officials outside of government offices. That, sir, and you can check with your lawyer or with a dictionary, is a lie. It's perjury. At your first appearance before this committee, you testified that you did not know and were not privy to any hospitality being given to anyone who worked for the government of Canada. 
Is that true or is that a lie? I've, I'm asking you a question. I've actually been, I'll just give you the names of all the people. I agree that I've actually taken these people. We've been outside of work. Hospit the question, sir, is on hospitality. You had said previously so every that, single, you, weren't, every that you, weren't privy, you weren't privy to information on whether that had happened. And uh, it seems like that's a lie. No, I'm just telling you I've, I'm privy now to information that happened. And I've just give, I've agreed that those people I've met outside of work. So, well, you're agreeing now. You disagreed before. Sir, both in documents and testimony, we now know that you, sir, in fact, provided hospitality to Government of Canada <laughs> officials on multiple occasions. And you I'm, lied I'm about it. To do that. To, you lied I'm about allowed, it, I, but, but you lied about it to the committee. If, if, you're, if you're content that, um, that it, everything was well within the bounds, if you've acted above board, my question to you, sir, is why is it every time you come to this committee, do you lie to parliamentarians and you lie to Canadians? I'm telling the truth. I have met with all of those people outside of work in a, hospita in a hospitality manner. Thank you, Mr. Barrett. Mr. Sousa, please. Reply. Chair, just a, a, a point of order. Um, there were a number of instances, obviously, during Mr. Barrett's questions in which the witness point blank refused to answer questions. I, I wonder if you as chair or can on behalf of the committee uh, direct the witness to provide answers to the questions that were asked. Okay, Mr. Firth, there was, I, I think there was a couple of you said that you had but would not provide at this time, but we're going to wait till later to provide would, for us. That was just the information for the the, the resources of the people, the opinion officials that are for those certain departments. I'm providing those the in contacts. 24 hours. The contacts, yes. Like I'm not, I'm not saying no to any of these questions. I'm just saying I will provide them after. Do you have? But I guess the question is, do you have that information now with you? I, I don't have the information with me right now. That's part of the reason why I'm asking for 24 hours to collect it. Okay. No, no, it, chair, chair, yeah, just chair. bear with us. That, 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 is, that is not what that is not what the witness said. The witness said, in fact, that. Uh, with the way the meeting is going, he wasn't prepared to provide them in public. Yeah. So, um, Mr. Firth, that was actually yeah, Mr. Firth, that is, I, I heard as chair, I had the information, but I'm not going to provide it right now. I'll provide it later in writing, which is different than I don't have the information now. I think you need to be Sorry, just very, very clear with your answers. I will be very clear. I don't have this saying. information available to me now. I'll provide it later, or I'm not willing to provide it at this time. Thank you, chair. I'll clarify. I have the information not with me at the present, and I will provide it within 24 hours when I need to collect it. Okay. Thanks, Mr. Firth. I just, and I realize it's difficult, but I just ask you, please uh, take the time to clarify these things uh, carefully. Mr. Uh, Genuis, please, for five, and then uh, Ms. Atwin. Mr. Firth, I want to circle back on some numbers that we discussed in my last round. You told this committee uh, that you and your partner put in about 30 to 40 hours per month over two years uh, and that your take home at the end of, of the whole arrive can process uh, was $2.5 million. Uh, now, um, uh, I, I think your figures understate the reality of how much you made. Your invoices don't line up with your own figures and your figures don't match the Auditor General's. Um, so I, I think the realities are, are understated by your numbers. But even if we take at face value your numbers, so doing that math, say 40 hours uh, over two, per month over two years, leading to 2.5 million take home, uh, that would measure out that you earned about $2,600 per hour. Uh, so, sir, how do you justify to taxpayers that you as a recruiter were effectively billing them at over $2,500 per hour for your involvement in the Arrive Can app? You have to look more about the fact that it's, this is not an hourly, hourly job. I mean, it says 30 to 40. I can be working in the evenings. I can be working in the daytimes. I can be working on the weekends. Like, you must appreciate like, there's a lot more that goes into just getting a set so this is not an hourly job, first of all. And but, also, sir, but I, I, I asked you the numbers, right? I, I just asked you to tell us how many hours, uh, and I did a simple calculation based on your estimates. Uh, so, okay, maybe maybe you, you work on weekends, so you think your weekend rate is $5,000 an hour and your weekly your week time rate is only $1,000 an hour. The point is I just did the math based on your, I think respectfully, lowball numbers, 
uh, and they come out to $2,600 per hour. Uh, do you think for Canadians that are struggling uh, under the, the burden of, of taxation and, and other challenges that they face in terms of uh, affordability and cost of living, uh, do you think you can really justify to them uh, that you, uh, who was recruiting other people to do IT work, uh, were billing at $2,600 an hour? First of all, I don't, I don't make this decision. The government obviously is valuing what myself and my firms and firms like us do. So I can't comment on what my hourly wages. I can just comment on the fact that we've had 55 contracts prior to these ones at CBSA where the government's seen value in everything we do. So right, sir, I, 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 I actually think you make a fair, fair point there. This, this is a question that I should be asking to the government. Uh, if, if, uh, if they're paying you at this rate, uh, wh why are they doing it? And, and these are questions that I think we, we need answers to. Mm -hmm. uh, sir, I want to ask you about Dalian's role in this deal. We found out some very striking things about, about Dalian uh, recently. Um, what, as far as you were able to see, what did they do for the $7.9 million that they purportedly got uh, for their involvement in ArriveCan? I'm sorry, I had no interactions with during ArriveCan. They had their own contract, and I had my own. I didn't have any interactions. Did with you them. have any discussions with them before or after the bid? No, not at all. They were not part of my. The, they were not part of any of the three. You, you're you're telling us you contest. never discussed or the ArriveCan work with Dalian. Um, oh no. Oh, you did discuss. Sorry, it with go them. ahead. Did you or didn't you? Oh, well, there was. We, we've spoken about mobile application where we've never spoken about contracts. Never spoken about arrive can specific. It may have been mobile work. Did, sir, applications. Did, did you or did you not have discussions with Dalian about the arrive can project, the contracts, the work that was done, anything to do with arrive can? We'd have had conversations, but way after the contracts were awarded. This was nothing to do with back and forth before any contract. Okay, so do you, do you know what? Do you know what they actually did? I, I was not part of their contract. I was not. I was not working with them. Like they were completely siloed doing their work, and I was siloed doing my work. Were, but but, but you had, you had, but you had before. conversations with them. Maybe, maybe not. But after the fact, we we never had conversations prior to a right hand contract awards. We okay. we speak, sir. The, the, I have one more question. This is respectfully getting nowhere. Um, my 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 colleague asked you that uh, the Auditor General found that GC Strategies were involved in the development of a contract from the government of Canada valued at 2.5 million for your firm received in May 2022 that you were involved in the development of that contract. Could you please tell us, sir, who did you communicate with the government of Canada uh, in, uh, in, for the contract received in May 2022? Uh, we want the names and I would ask you to answer that question. I would ask the chair uh, to put that question to you on behalf of the committee and insist on an answer. And an answer right now. Are you clear on the question, Mr. Firth? No, I am. And again, I'm, I'm standing strong with what I've said before. This is being pushed by the committee to put all these allegations up against me and my firm to the RCMP. And at this point, if there's an ongoing investigation, I'm not prepared to comment on it right yeah, now. Just, just, just on a point of order, what, what you think my motivations are for asking the question uh, are, is not at all germane. I'd like, I'd like the chair to put the question to you, and you have an obligation uh, to answer it, whether you want to or not, because of the rules uh, that, that apply uh, to Parliament, to its committees, and to witnesses who come before it. So, Mr. Chair, could you yeah. put that question and insist Mr. on the Firth, answer? Mr. we would appreciate an answer. And the fact that you've stated yourself, you have not been, or GC, or your partner have not been contacted by the RCMP, leads me to believe perhaps they're not going down that path with you. So I think the committee and taxpayers would appreciate a, uh, a response to uh, Mr. Genuas. Appreciate the, the question there, Chair, but the, the truth is, I mean, what's being reported on Twitter and as a result of some things that are said here in this committee and the fact that they was pushed by every, but most of the committee members with everybody that's coming forth with this to push all information to the RCMP, I have to assume that that actually is happening. And even PSPC and the Auditor General have said they've moved their information over there. Right, but uh, and again, and, and I'm sorry to interfere, Mr. Genwes, or intervene, but you've said to yourself they haven't started anything with GC. I, I'd hate to ask for not be able to get to any responses based on a supposition that they may one day. I think it's a fair question. Would you please provide an answer? Would you mind if I just take two seconds of my lawyer, please? 
Of course. Uh, just turn off your mic, please. Okay. Uh, colleagues, uh, we were, sorry, Mr. Oh, go ahead, Mr. Firth. Sorry, thank you. Uh, again, I really appreciate the opportunity, Chair, that you've laid it out clearly, but at this point, we're still remaining with our stance of there possibly being a pending RCMP investigation. I this will, um, I will advise you, as I'm sure you're aware, you do have parliamentary privilege, which would, uh, allow you the right to speak, but I understand, um, I'll let the, my colleagues who brought up the question pursue it a different way. Mr. Deltel, please, for five minutes, sir. Merci beaucoup, uh, Monsieur le Président. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairperson. Mr. Firth, my question is directed at you, of course. I'd like to know if your company has contracts with private companies. Yes, we do. Dans quel secteur? In what particular sector? Yes, we, yes, we did, rather. Dans quel secteur? In what particular sector or sectors? Sorry, apologies, I missed the last one. Okay, what, what kind of activities are they involved in? Oh, criminal IT, oh the private companies. Mm -hmm. There are IT software firms. They are um, system integrators. Parlons maintenant de la qualité de votre... Let's now talk about the quality of your work with uh, ArriveCan. What are your thoughts about the final product with all the ups and downs, the vicissitudes uh, that uh, Canadians had to come to grips with uh, throughout this application and its process? I think understanding the, the circumstances where the whole of Canada and the whole of the world was in um, and the fact that this went through 170 renditions and they were delivered always on time, I think our work was... Was, 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 very, was, was done very well, and I feel like the application was a success. Um, I believe Hold it was on. 260, I believe the application was a success. We had 200, I think 260 million times the success. app was open. I, a success. You're, you're, you're saying that your application was a success. You're serious now, right? I think, I think it did exactly what it was supposed to. It was to oh, help right. open the borders. It, it was helped to streamline the process. It was to be a low-touch um, application. I think if we look at those, you know, it was always there was a moving target. There was a P hack was sending out new policies every month Hello. or so. Okay, Mr. Firth, qu'est-ce que vous avez à dire? Mr. Firth, what do you have to say to the over 10,000 people who have joined a class action lawsuit because your app led them to have be subjected to a quarantine that they weren't supposed to be subjected to? What are your thoughts on that? I mean, I think it's very unfortunate for those 10,000 people, but I cannot comment on things that happen within the application. Pardon? I provide the resources. Monsieur Nessin, vous êtes... Hold on a sec. Hold, hold on a sec. You said that it was a success. And yet, thousands of Canadians were affected in this way. Over 10,000 Canadians have filed a class action against your app because your app led to a quarantine that they should never have been subjected to. So why are you washing your hands of this and passing the buck? I'm sorry, I, I really have no comment on this. That's not my line of expertise. Thank you. Yeah. Un unbelievable. If it's not your bailiwick or expertise, whose is it if it's not yours? We were not involved in the architecture. You understand this, this project was, was derived and, and project managed by the CBSA. My God. How are you going to tell these over 10,000 people that you raked in profits of millions of dollars with this application? Is it really worth $2.5 million in uh, windfalls? We're talking about 10,000 people who were quarantined that never should have been because of your app. Sorry, can you repeat? My headphones just blow. Okay. Vous avez affirmé tantôt. Listen, you asserted earlier that you made a profit of $2.5 million. That's... Uh, 
those are your figures. We know that the AG doesn't think uh, so, but, but we'll take what you said at face value. That's $2.5 million for 40 hours per month. You've made a profit of $2.5 million for this app, and yet I'm telling you that there are 10,200 Canadians that were subject to quarantine when they shouldn't have been because of your app, because that is what has occurred, and you're saying that it was a success. Was it really worth $2.5 million profit, uh, that kind of success story? Uh, like I said previously, I, I don't make that decision. The government obviously sees value in what we do. That's why we were working there for three years. So where does the buck stop if it doesn't stop with you? Again... I did not make the decision. The government sees value in what we do. We were not part of architecting this application. Thank you very much, uh, sir. Over to you. Uh, Mr. Barrett, please, for five. Is a significant part of your job uh, contacting and communicating with government, uh, their departments, agencies, or crown corporations? Yes, yes it is. And how many hours per month would you say that uh, you spend on that? Um, it, it's hard to quantify that because if we're busy with existing contracts, then there's contract management and other components versus new business development and interactions and identifying new opportunities. Let's look for a number. You, you can use you and your partner combined. Mr. Anthony, how many, how many hours per month? I, I, sorry, I can answer that honestly. Accurately, sorry. Is it uh, more than 80? Yes, per month, for sure. More than 80 per month. Okay. Is, is it more than 100? I, I, I'm, I can't quantify. I'm just giving you an answer of 80. More than 80. So uh, do you also proactive, that includes proactively making the government aware of the services uh, that you offer? Again. Sorry, it depends. It depends on whether or not we are. With the cam, there was not 80 hours of meeting and proposing and getting new business because we were managing 100 resources at that time. Are you registered? So it varies. Are you registered to lobby? No, I'm not because we do not charge a fee. As an owner of a GC Strategies, you obviously have control over your company's website. Um, you were here 16 months ago as part of the Arrive scam inquiry, and I asked you in October 2022 to provide names of senior government officials that offer glowing endorsements for you on your website. I want to read some of those uh, because um, uh, you haven't had a chance over the last 16 months, I guess, to furnish us with that information. Um, here's one for you. I think they are first and foremost are a taxpayer. Um, they, GC Strategy, see the bigger picture and do not chase the quick sale. I think they are first and foremost are a taxpayer and see efficiency and getting the best value for government. That's the chief data officer of the public sector. Who who was that? What's their name? So first of all, apologies for not getting that information to you. I, I thought I had. I mean, I sent hundreds of pages at that day, and I'm more than happy to give you that information in writing. <laughs> okay. Like, let's be serious, sir. Uh, you've had 16 months, and so you believe you, you want us to believe that you're going to provide us with that information now that you've been asked again. Um, Government of Canada senior executive said, quote, GC Strategies, listen and try to find solutions to my problem versus selling me a solution to a problem I've never had. Who was that person? So I'm sorry, you can ask me the three or four that are on there, and my answer is going to be the same. I will get you that information. I promise you that. I I thought I'd said Sir, over 16 months let, ago. Let me be very clear that in the Arrive scam, there are all kinds of players who play all kinds of different roles, and you've demonstrated yourself to be a liar. You've lied before a parliamentary committee on multiple occasions. You even undertook to provide to me the, this information 16 months ago. You and I had this exchange, and now you're here, and the only reason you came was because you were threatened to be arrested and you've, you've come uh, uh, virtually, and, uh, and now your undertaking is to provide the information you promise, cross your heart, that you're going to do it this time, but you couldn't do it before. Uh, it's, it, it strains reason and certainly demonstrates that 
um, you know, you don't have any credibility when it comes to the questions that we ask, and w which leaves me to wonder what I should even bother asking you, because I can't believe anything that you're going to say. Will you provide us with those names right now? You obviously know, you obviously know who the VP of a major crown corporation was who appears on your website. The chief information officer for the government of Canada. What was the name? You know, you know. I said previously, I will, I will give you, you these information. No, sir. No, no sir. I do not accept that. Per, you will provide this committee with a name. You told us 16 months. You've had, you've had, you've had 16 months. You've had 16 months to do it. And this is your opportunity now to demonstrate that you are true to your word. So are you, are you going to make that demonstration or are you going to prove uh, what we know to be true? And that's that you're not honest. Like I said, I appreciate the question. I will give you the answers. Yeah, your appreciation for the question isn't the reason that I asked it. <laughs> I'm, looking for, Again, I'm, looking, I'm, lo I'm looking for the information. I said I would give you the information. Yeah, you also said that 16 months ago. Sir, it is uh, not just contempt of, of Parliament, but it's contemptuous to Canadians. They are lined up at food banks in record numbers, and you are raking in millions of dollars off the backs of Canadians. And then when you're called to provide even just the smallest bit of accountability, you, you laugh in Canadians' face. And it's, um, it's, it's disgusting, to be clear. And, um, and, well, we'll see if you do, in fact, provide those names finally this time. But after 16 months, um, I certainly don't believe you, and neither can Canadians. Thanks. That is our time. Mr. Uh, Firth, you're welcome to offer a quick response. Otherwise, we'll go to Mr. Kismuchuk. Mr. Firth, did you want to respond to that? Okay. Mr. Generous, please. Go ahead, sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Firth, how many current contracts do you have with the Government of Canada? We have zero contracts right now. Uh, okay. Is, is it not the case that you have one outstanding that ends at the end of March? No. Nope. That was, that was cancelled. The resources were pulled off the, uh, pulled off the project. Okay. Um, you, and this is because you've been suspended from getting certain kinds of contracts with the government, correct? Suspended but not outright banned. Is that, is that accurate? I'm correct with being suspended, but okay. we've lost our security clearance. We've lost our security clearances as well, so we cannot actually build on that work. Okay. Well, uh, work. How, how are you? Control. How are you informed about this change to your uh, procurement status? Well, at first we found out in the House of Commons when the minister declared it, but we weren't aware of it. And then secondly, we were let know by PSPC. Okay, so the minister said it before, before the contract had actually been cancelled. Yeah. And also before our security had been cancelled. Okay, so what was the lag time between the minister saying it had happened and when it actually happened? Three hours. Mm. Okay, so it happened the same day. Uh, who from PSPC contacted you? Can I get that to you? I don't have it in front of me right now. Uh, can you get it to us within by 5 o'clock? I think it was on... Yes, give me two, yes, by five o'clock. Yes. Okay. Were you contacted by any other departments? Only those people who we had uh, resources remaining in there who actually removed the resources from the from their project. Okay. On what dates were you contacted by other departments? Um, again, can I kindly ask that I get that to you? By five, please. Um, in the lead up to these changes, were you in discussions with government officials? Did you have any conversations about? Uh, uh, the possible suspension. I was in. Yeah, I had a conversation with a, with a gentleman from PSPC where I indicated that I actually was going to terminate my security before it was suspended because when you have no government contracts, it's kind of hard to get. Who who, who who are you in touch with at PSPC? What's the gentleman's name? I think, I think his name's Nolan. No, Nolan was his first name, and I can't remember his last name. Sorry, Belleville. Okay. I think it's, Nolan was his first name. Okay. Uh, and could you give us dates for those discussions? Yes, I can. Okay. Uh, what does the GC and GC strategy stand for? Sorry? What does the GC? No, just Government of Canada. Just Government of Canada. Okay, Government of Canada Strategies is the full name. Uh, did you discuss your testimony today with anybody from the government? 
No, I did not. Okay. Um, uh, you, you, are, are, are you, you're, you'll confirm that and, and we'll be able, that'll, that you didn't just have any discussions with anyone? I can confirm anyone? that. I can confirm that. Okay. Uh, sir, I want to give you, uh, one more chance to answer the question that I asked previously. Uh, I think you should understand and appreciate, uh, the powers that parliament has, uh, and the critical role that parliament has in getting information from Canadians. Uh, and, and you may not like the criticism that, that entails, that, that, that sometimes flows from it, uh, but we have a responsibility to stand up for taxpayers, and that includes being able to fulfill our functions as, as parliamentarians. Um, so can you provide the names of the officials who you met with uh, that I had previously requested uh, for, the, um, for the contract uh, where you sat down with government officials and, and worked out the terms of that contract. Can you provide the names of who you met with? I you know, appreciate the question, but unfortunately, again, I'm still taking the same stance that I was brought in here before the investigation was completed. And all assumptions is the RCMP has every allegation that's surrounding this. So at that point, I cannot interject. Sir, have you been briefed by your lawyer on the constitutional principle of the supremacy of parliament, the uh, the rights that parliamentary committees have when it comes to requesting information, uh, the, 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 the fundamental powers that in a democracy uh, the legislature has to have? Have you, have you been briefed on these issues? And, uh, and, and if you have, then why do you persist in, um, in just disregarding those, um, those requirements? I appreciate the question. So unfortunately, I can't comment on that, but the conversations between myself and my, my lawyer are privileged. You're privileged, all right. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I, I think I, th I think there's a, quite an assertion of privilege from you that ignores the the rights and responsibilities of democratically elected uh, legislative uh, bodies. So okay. that is um, our time, <clears throat> Mr. Genos. Mrs. Block, go ahead. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Really quickly, Mr. Firth, do you have any contracts with provincial governments or any municipal governments at this time? No, I do not. Okay, thank you. The Auditor General noted that CBSA identified a resource um, that was added to one of your task authorizations as a subcontractor, and this resource was KPMG, and she noted that that was unusual. This is a one of the four largest multinational firms uh, uh, worldwide, and yet they were they were placed on a tax authorization form as a subcontractor to your company. Do you know who approached KPMG to be put in place as a subcontractor to GC Strategies? Uh, no, I, I know who approached me from KPMG, but I don't know. I don't know. In front of me right now, I can't comment on that. Sorry. Who was your contact at KPMG? Again, I'm... With all due respect, I'd like to give you that before five o'clock since I'm trying to get out of here okay. uh, in writing. Okay. Um, uh, at the same time, could you provide us with how much of a commission you would have earned as a result of that resource being placed on a tax authorization form? Absolutely. Um, in response to some of the questions or comments that my colleague, Mr. Sousa, made in his previous intervention, the Auditor General, the Procurement Ombuds, the Comptroller General have all indicated that they are deeply concerned with what has been uncovered during this study. They believe that, uh, you know, this could be an issue across other departments. In fact, the Auditor General noted two other departments. There are 10 investigations ongoing um, in regards to the irregularities, the mismanagement, and I think what could come down to criminality. And so my question for you actually is, are you aware of something called the Charbonneau Loop, a term uh, used in um, procurement and bidding? No, sorry, I'm not. Okay, Charbonneau Loops ultimately happen when the pool of companies receiving public, public sector contracts for a given type of work is small enough that the same companies are sometimes overseen and sometimes overseen by their peers in that same pool. Have you had any conversations with any of the other companies or firms that were bidding on the same contracts as you? 
No, I did not. Okay. Well, thank you very much for that. Um, I, I guess, uh, Chair, in, in follow-up to my questions around KPMG, I am wondering if uh, we, you can confirm that we have actually invited KPMG to appear before our committee and if they have responded. Uh, KPMG and all of the uh, subcontractors have been invited and we're working on dates. Okay, thank you very much. Do I have any? Okay. Okay, so I just want to confirm then, uh, you said you did private, you have done some work in the private sector, and I'm not sure if I heard, did you provide us with a percentage of the work that you do um, between government and what percentage is from the private sector? Um. I can speculate to give you an answer, but it would not be 100% accurate. So would you like me to sketch the exact? Oh. I, I don't have the exact number in front of me and I don't want to do approximations. I'm just wondering, would you like me to get you the, the exact number or an approximation right now? Sorry, um, I thought you had cut out. Yes, if you could just provide us with the percentage of work that you've done uh, for the public sector, and I'm thinking specifically the federal government, the government of Canada, because it appears you haven't done any work with other levels of government. If you could give, or, give us the percentage that you have done with the federal government versus the percentage for the private sector, that would be appreciated. Okay, I will provide that for you. Thank you. 